breaking news. First at four, Michigan will be fully open sooner than expected. When the state is dropping the mask mandate for everyone and allowing businesses to open at full capacity. Ben. Karen, the warmth is back, but the humidity is not. So when the two get together tomorrow, find out just how strong the storms are going to be. Paula? Turning employees into family to stay afloat and survive COVID-19. We've got one company's journey and story. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news, Michigan rolling back major COVID restrictions sooner than expected. Governor Whitmer has moved up the state's reopening by more than a week with cases dropping. Now the magic date is now June 22nd. That's next Tuesday. Rob Maloney live to break down the changes for everybody now that just five days away. Yes, and we would, had received word that the governor might do this today, but she had a news conference this morning, didn't talk about it. But here we are, and let's take a look at exactly what it is that she's going to be doing here. On June 22nd, next Tuesday, capacity in indoor and outdoor settings increases to 100%. The state's no longer going to require face masks, so there's no more debate about that. The original date, of course, was July 1st. Now, some orders will remain in effect for vulnerable, vulnerable populations in corrections, long-term care, and agriculture. And then there is also going to be specific guidance on schools and what's to happen to them, perhaps having to do with summer school and then also what they want to do in the fall. And so uh, that is what is that the governor intends to do on Tuesday. She's saying essentially that the low positivity rate, um, the, uh, the number, I think it was 24.3 per million cases of COVID means that for all intents and purposes, this is all behind us now. Governor, very uh, excited, very happy about what she's doing here. And uh, for many people, it's also an exciting day. And it's one of those things where uh, in as much as she's going to pull the wrappers off and, and have the restrictions taken down, uh, it does not look like this is going to ramp up immediately, that it's going to be kind of a slow ramp up, especially at restaurants. We're here at Zingerman's at the Roadhouse here in Ann Arbor, and we'll be talking to them about how they're going to handle this. We'll also be hearing from uh, the uh, folks who work in the gym industry and how devastating this has been for them and how they intend to come back as well. So there's a lot to talk about with all of this. And so coming up on Local 4 News at 5 and again at 6, we'll be exploring all of those issues. Reporting live in Ann Arbor, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thank you very much, Rod. Our coverage continues, and that news comes as cases continue to drop today. This, today, the state reported 172 new cases. That's seven fewer than yesterday. We did lose, though, another 20 lives, 18, through a review of records. At last update on Tuesday, the 60.6% .6 of Michiganders 16 and older have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. Also breaking, Juneteenth is now a federal holiday. President Biden signing a bill into law as we speak in front of a group of activists. Let's take a live look from the White House. The bill passed the House last night and the Senate earlier this week. Juneteenth marks the day. Word finally reached the last enslaved people in Texas that they were free. Throughout history, Juneteenth has been known by many names. Jubilee Day, Freedom Day, Liberation Day, <clears throat> Emancipation Day, and today, a national holiday. <laughs> Congress passed the Emancipation Act back in 1862. President Lincoln wrote the Emancipation Proclamation to be effective in 1863, but it took more years for all enslaved to be freed. June 19th will become the country's 11th federal holiday. Other big stories we're following right now, weather. You heard on the top of the newscast. We are going to be in for some storms later on today. Or I should say tomorrow, and that they could actually turn to severe. severe. Yes, Karen. Uh, first, we've got the heat that's coming in today, but tomorrow we start mixing in the humidity, and that's the recipe that those storms are going to need uh, to start fueling up. But you can see we've got 80s out there right now, even mid 80s uh, in City Airport, but that humidity is still very low. In fact, the air is actually drier today than it was yesterday. Here's the severe risk for tomorrow. Most of us are in that category one, the marginal risk. 
Parts of the south zone are under a slight risk, but uh, the Storm Prediction Center has intensified that risk across central Indiana and Ohio. We still expect the strongest storms to remain south of us. We're just sort of on the northern extent of this, but nevertheless, we still have a severe risk tomorrow. It is going to be in two rounds. The first round will be here probably before the uh, sun comes up tomorrow morning. Done by noon, that is not the severe threat. That The severe threat is going to be for a few hours in the afternoon, and we, not everybody is going to see those thunderstorms. So we'll talk more about the differences between those two rounds and how this is shaping up for the weekend in just a few minutes. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. Two of the state's largest health systems have entered a talks for merger. Beaumont and Spectrum Health Systems have signed a letter of intent to explore creating a new health system. Now, it would be temporarily called BHSH System with 22 hospitals, 305 outpatient locations, and 64,000 employees. BHSH system would operate dual headquarters in Grand Rapids and Southfield. It would be led by current Spectrum Health President and CEO Tina Fries Decker. Together, we are uniquely positioned to deliver value in exceptional care and coverage that is accessible, equitable, and affordable, while maintaining our unwavering commitment to our local communities in Michigan. And this allows us to build upon our complementary clinical strengths, expand access to more Michiganders, and make important investments to improve the health and well-being of people across our state. Beaumont and Spectrum hope to have the process of creating this new system completed by this fall. Supreme Court has dismissed a challenge to the Affordable Care Act, keeping coverage for millions of people. Now, in a vote of seven to two, the justices left the entire law intact. A group of Republican-led states sued, claiming their requirement to have health insurance or pay a penalty is unconstitutional. Now, the ruling leaves that requirement in place, along with other provisions for people with pre-existing conditions and an expansion of Medicaid. President Biden called today's ruling a big win for the American people. A big court ruling on marijuana in Detroit today. A district court judge has stopped the city from giving out those recreational pot licenses. Now, the judge says the city's plan to give longtime Detroiters first priority over other applicants is unfair and unconstitutional. A plan approved by the Detroit City Council was designed to benefit people who have lived in Detroit for at least a decade. Mara McDonald is working on this story right now, gathering reaction to the ruling, and she'll have more coming up tonight when you join us at 5. Well, there is a new effort underway to help lower child poverty all across the city of Detroit. The expanded child tax credit is available to eligible families under the American Rescue Plan. The one-year expanded provision of up to $3,600 per child under the age of 18 is available. The money will be broken down into monthly payments beginning in July, provided the family files taxes. The city is launching a new campaign to get the word out about the tax credit and the resources available to them. A lot of people don't realize that there is money to help raise your children, and it's separate from everything else you've heard about, and we just need to make sure folks know. So if you know somebody who hasn't filled out their tax returns, tell them about this. Well, we put a complete eligibility information for the child credit on our homepage of clickondetroit.com. Make sure to check it out. It was the worst time to open a hotel, let alone build one. Plans had already been in place for a local family-run hospitality group to move forward with several new ventures. And that's when COVID struck and shut the world down. But as Paula Tutman reports, the group used this as an opportunity to help employees grow. Certainly the struggles for businesses to survive COVID are well documented, but one local family building group decided to turn their employees into family members, knitted themselves together so they could survive the pandemic. New hotel group Cambria, a venue in Traverse City, the homegrown home builders, decided to jump into the hospitality business in Metro Detroit feet first, of course, not realizing a pandemic would shut them down cold. So all of a sudden, you know, a year before you're supposed to open, you hear news that hospitality is closed, restaurants are closed. Despite the pandemic, the hotel and restaurant Verona opened in Shelby Township in December with few customers and few prospects for customers and made a decision. They would keep their team in place and ride out the storm together. They pulled employees from other venues and grew them and groomed them into the positions they would need 
when the world of hospitality reopened. Hannah, who's over there at the front desk, she used to clean our new construction units and she stepped up and became housekeeping manager at the hotel. Fighting through this together and having to figure out how do we open. Um, someone doesn't show up, you have to work the night shift. Someone's not here, you have to do dishes. I mean, our chefs stay after two hours and wash dishes right now because we just can't hire dishwashers. So it's, you know, everybody who steps up, they're your, they're your family. I kept my job, so many of my peers here kept their jobs and it's just a testament. Add to that a major big league project being built simultaneously in the city of Detroit, a downtown full service restaurant, banquet center, hotel, and of course, at the height of COVID, construction stopped on Howard Street, setting the project back, but not stopping it. New players in the big hotel game, the owners and the staff banded together, did jobs that weren't necessarily theirs, steeled themselves against the violent storm of a pandemic, and survived. We're giving ownership opportunities to our staff now and saying, look, you're very good at social media. Take a piece of the social media division, make it yours. At that point, it was pretty much difficulty after difficulty, trying to get everything managed, um, trying to get everything in place. And as soon as you take one step forward, you're taking four steps back. So the perseverance of not only myself, but our whole team is incredible. Today, as the world reopens, the gamble is paying off. The Shelby Township venue is booked solid. Construction is back on downtown, and they are looking for workers. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Ah, good news story. We appreciate it. Thank you. The Cambria Group is looking for workers of all kinds, including in construction and hospitality. We did post a link on clickondetroit.com for anyone who may want to apply. A store in nearly every Metro Detroit mall is rebranding in a really big way. The change is coming to Victoria's Secret in an effort to be more inclusive. And it may be tough to get your hands on fireworks this 4th of July, but one major retailer says you should stock up now. You don't want this to happen when you're floating in space. The problem that forced an American astronaut to delay work 